In this video, we are going to see how to get add liquidity or remove liquidity transactions on Radium V4 in real time. All the API links and BitQuery Telegram channel link will be in the description. Navigate to id.bitquery.io and register first as a developer to get the free credits. I have already done that so I am going to directly jump on the API examples. We will use instructions API under the hood. So we need to know first which method is used to trigger add liquidity and remove liquidity transactions on Radium V4. To know that we will firstly get all the methods on Radium V4 program. Make sure this is EAP. EAP is our early access program and it's our point to get Solana data. Right now the data is only real time. Now to get all the methods select Solana then instructions. And then in where condition, we'll specify the program address, which is going to be Radium V4 address. Now we'll select the fields we need data on. Select instruction and then program and then method. Now we'll also select the count to group the same methods together. After running this query, we will get the count for each method invoked in past 8 hours or so. Swap, stake LP, set position range stop, set position stop loss and initialize user with nuns. So initialize user with nuns is the method to initialize a new pair on Radium V4. Set position stop loss is going to be the method which triggers when add liquidity transactions are happening. Set position range stop is for li remove liquidity transactions. Now we will write an API to get the real time liquidity additions to Radium V4. We are not considering new pool creations to be liquidity additions right now. If you want that too in the result, you need to put one more method in the program methods array and that is going to be initialize user with nuns. For now, I will only filter for set position stop loss method invoke transactions. Select Solana, then instructions and then in where condition, we'll specify our instruction program address as redeem v4 address. Also the program method is going to be this set position stop loss. We're also going to select the transaction result success to be true. As many transactions are failing right now and I only want the data for the successful transactions. Now I'm going to select the fields I need info about. I'll select the block time. I'll select the transaction signature to look the transaction on soul scan. I'll select instruction and under that accounts and under accounts, I'll select address as writable and also the token details. If you want all these details, then you can select these also. Ancestor indexes, balance of dates count, external SQL number, data, depth, caller index, call path, then logs if you need, internal SQL number, index, program and under that account names under that address method which is going to be set position stop loss and then arguments under arguments we need to select name type and value under value we'll select all the data types because the arguments can be of any data type now i'm going to change this query keyword to subscription to make this a web socket and i'll run this query so the subscription is taking a lot of time so that means that maybe not many adding liquidity transactions are happening right now. We'll change the subscription keyword to query again to make it a query and I'm getting the last five results. So to analyze them, this is the accounts array. These are the addresses in it. The sixth and seventh address and under that specifically the mint addresses are the tokens A and B involved in the pool for whose liquidity additions is this transaction. These are the account names you can get. So this is the result for add liquidity transactions and you can see that maybe we are not parsing all the account names and you can check that from the transaction signature and look at looking it up on soul scan token a is soul token b is 3d urm this is the add liquidity transaction program account name should have been 14 but we are only parsing three that means the order is not also the same but we can check one thing that we can get the token a and token b from the seventh mint address eighth mint address now we're gonna get to remove liquidity transactions by specifying the method as set position range stop and keeping everything the same in this also the pool tokens a and b can be known through mint addresses of seventh and eighth address and accounts array thanks for watching like and subscribe and head over to our telegram channel if you have any questions